This tutorial will describe the timeline of an item and how to work with it. The timeline can be represented as a timeline with presets or as an advanced timeline. By default each item is created with a preset timeline and can be switched to advanced timeline if needed. At first we will show how to work with the preset timeline in case of a 2D text item. The item is created by the CG only withhold stage. So when put it on air, it will appear on the screen immediately having no delay, input or output transitions. In order to show all the possibilities of the preset timeline, we will assign values for all stages. On the timeline all four stages will appear, delay stage, input stage, hold stage, output stage. During delay, represented as a grey segment, the item it is not displayed. During input, represented by the first segment, the item makes his entrance. During hold stage, represented as a green segment, the item performs his act, basically staying still on the screen. If the infinite option it is not checked, the segment becomes yellow and will have a finite duration. During output, represented by an orange segment, the item leaves the screen. The duration of a segment can be adjusted, after selecting it, by editing the corresponding controls. Or by dragging the start or the end of the segment, with the mouse. Each segment is defined by two keyframes that actually keeps the characteristics of the item at the corresponding time. Between keyframes, the properties of an item are obtained from linear interpolation of the values from previous and next keyframe. The keyframe can be moved, after selecting it, by dragging with the mouse. The duration of previous and next segments will be affected when the common keyframe is moved. For input and output stages, the CG allows you to assign transitions for the items. There are three types of transitions. Push, by modifying the position. Fade, by modifying the transparency. Reveal, by modifying the drawing area. Applying a push transition will determine the item to enter the screen from left, right, upper or bottom side of the screen. Applying a fade transition will determine the item to increase the opacity, during input stage, or transparency, during output stage. By applying a reveal or a wipe transition, the item will show or hide by modifying the draw area. Besides the type of transition, the user can choose the weight of a transition. The weight of a transition tells how much from its behavior should be applied at its maximum moment. For example, if we choose 75% for the fade in transition in the input stage, the item will not be fully transparent at the starting of the input stage but it will have 25% opacity. In order to navigate the timeline you can use the in hold and out buttons that will set the cursor at the corresponding moments. You can also double click a segment to set the cursor at the beginning of the segment. If you want to position the cursor at a certain position you can input the value in the corresponding edit box. By clicking on the play, stop previewing button, you will see the project playing in the preview window. In case that you need to implement sophisticated transitions, you can switch to an advanced timeline that allows you to set the properties for each keyframe, extending the possibilities to animate an item. For switching to an advanced timeline, simply click on the advanced button, and confirm the dialog. The controls associated with the four stages timeline will change. On an advanced timeline you can have as many segments and keyframes as you want. In order to navigate the timeline you can use go to previous and go to next buttons. You can also double click a segment to set the cursor at the beginning of the segment. If you want to position the cursor at a certain frame, you can do it by writing the value in the corresponding edit box. The place top previewing buttons will allow previewing the animation of the project in the preview window. The properties of a segment are available after selecting the segment and right-clicking on it. 
you can enable or disable the infinite loop property of a segment by setting the corresponding checkbox. The color of the segment will change accordingly. You can create a new keyframe that will appear at a cursor position by clicking on New Keyframe. A keyframe can be also created by positioning the cursor on the desired location and clicking on the plus button of the timeline control window. In a similar way, you can delete an existing keyframe by selecting it and clicking on the minus button from the timeline control window. For changing the item's properties for a certain keyframe, just select the keyframe, or double click on the right positioned segment, and click on animate button to activate per keyframe animation mode. The background of the item's properties panel will change accordingly. If the animate button it is active, the properties of the item will be modified only if the cursor is set on a keyframe. We will change the color of the item for one keyframe. We will change the position of the item for the last keyframe. And, we will also change the color of the item for the last keyframe. By scrubbing with the cursor on the timeline, we can see the interpolated values for position and color being displayed for the frames of the segment contained by the keyframes. When the animate button it is not active, the modification of a parameter will affect all the keyframes. For example, modifying the Y position will move the already made animation on Y axis. This tutorial has shown animating the color and position of an item but you can also animate the size, draw area, rotation angles and transparency. Please remember that during playing in the preview window, the properties cannot be edited.